So today, me and Delia are going to tell you about how to detect nominal anomalies in Twitter data. So a little bit about us. Um, so Delia holds a PhD in natural language processing and machine learning. And um, I did a master in statistics a couple of years ago. So the company we work for is called, yeah, bear with me. This, this is happening. We don't know why, but it comes back quite quickly. There we go. <laughs> So um, the company we work for is called Gnosis, and it's a social intelligence company. Provide. Can you speak up, please? Yeah. OK. Can you hear me? Yeah. So um, it's a social intelligence company uh, which analyzes Twitter data. So why do we want to analyze Twitter data? Well, um, in recent years, um, social media have become quite popular, and people talk you know, a lot on social media. And um, they are also become an alternative source of, of news, of information. So people want to know what's going on, and they want to know um, what's the crowd view of, of, you know, of what's been talked on, on, on Twitter. So um, i show you a little bit what, um, what, what one of our products looks like. Um, so, we, so it's impossible to keep track of what, what's going on on Twitter if you just use Twitter on its own. So what we do is to, to run algorithms that understand what's, uh, what's actually relevant um, among the tweets that, that are generated. And we um, classify them into, into I mean, we, we, we divide them into, into buckets and say, well, if a tweet is talking about Apple, the company Apple, then we, we, pu we put it in this, in this stream here. So we run some uh, classification and um, these migration algorithms that manages to, to identify tweets for, for a specific com company. But we can also do, we also do it for, for themes or events like, I don't know, terrorism or stuff like that. And um, if you, you know, if you go, you can have an overview of what's been told about Apple or other things like Santander and, and things like that. This is a bit of analytics that we also do. So the important thing is that People wants to be wants to be up to date um, with respect to, to news, and uh, Twitter is a, is an alternative source of of, of news. Um, so well, so what what do we do at there you go again? Anyway, what do we do at Gnosis? Um, so in order to do all of this, we we develop algorithms about um, named entity recognition. Uh, or disambiguation and linkage. This means that when um, when there are tweets about Apple, we need to understand if Apple is the company or the fruit. But also, we need to link um, different things like I don't know um, tweets about Tim Cook to to the company Apple itself. So to the same to the same concept. We also do event detection. It's very important to to get so people want to know uh, when there is an event like. For instance, when two companies are merging, or when when a company is acquiring another one, and often Twitter is the um, the source of these of these news. So when there is a breaking news, it first breaks on Twitter, and it's way way faster than traditional news sources. We also do some social network analysis and sentiment analysis. But what uh, we're going to talk to you, uh, wh what we're going to tell you about today is anomaly detection and novelty detection. So why? why we're giving this to us. So what we really wanted to do was to detect novel anomalies in Twitter data. So what does that mean? It means that our users want to be alerted quite, quite quickly, promptly, when there is a, you know, some, some anomalies in the, in the social activity around maybe a company or an event. This means that um, we want to detect stuff that are not previously seen, so they are not, oop, they are novel, and somehow deviates from what is standard or what's it, what is expected. And all of these uh, concerns social activity. This means like the volume of tweets that we see um, about, let's say, a specific company as, you know, is, is, is not standard, is not expected. So this means that the conversation spikes up and suddenly it gets viral. So people start talking about it. And at this, so why people want to, sorry about that, uh, wants to know about it? Well, because 
most of the time, this links to an event that has happened or is about to happen. So here, I show you a little, a little chart, which is about the daily tweet volume <coughs> for, um, for uh, Volkswagen. So all the tweets that we think that, that our systems detect as, as um, containing relevant content um, got you know, processed. And this is the daily, daily volume for, uh, for a couple of weeks back in September. So what we see is that like we went, like the conversation was quiet for, for a few days, but then on the 18th of September, there was a, a clear spike in the volume of tweets being created and published by users. And if you say again, a volume is the, is the number of tweets um, that we, uh, that belongs to the, the um, Volkswagen stream. So what we identify as being linked to, to Volkswagen, right? It, because this is an example about Volkswagen. Um, so that's a daily, daily view. So each bar is the volume for that day. And uh, what we see on the 18th <coughs> is this spike here, which if you have a closer look at the stock price, well, we see that on the 18th <coughs> something happened and the, the stock <coughs> price you know, dropped massively. So what was that about? Well, on that day, on some, some user tweeted about the emission scandals that then involved Volkswagen. Uh, that was minutes <laughs> before traditional news sources. So sometimes happened that on Twitter, news get published earlier than traditional, than in traditional news agency. So, you know, if you are an investor or if you got money invested in, in, in Volkswagen that you probably want to know about, about events happening around this company. Or you know, if you are like a trader, you want to <coughs> or maybe short this company and get like maybe a 20, 30% return out of it, right? <laughs> so that's pretty, that's pretty useful for, for people who cares about companies and, and things like that. So let's have a look at how we, we build this, this, uh, this detection system. So, as I said at the beginning, uh, the, the starting point is the universe of, of tweets, but we cannot, um, we cannot deal with, with all of them, right? There is a lot of noise, there is a lot of irrelevant information being shared on Twitter. So Gnosis system deals with all of, the, of, of, of these problems. So we, we pre-process tweets, we um, run you know, classification and, and other algorithms to, to only to filter tweets to correctly identify um, to which company this tweet is talking about. And um, after we, we got a bunch of them, we give it to, to the anomaly det detection service. So uh, this is responsible to get these tweets, look at some, some volume, some history about the tweets volume for, for this company here, and give an answer which is, yes, we are approaching an anomalous period, or, or we are in, into, uh, in, a, in an anomalous situation. This output is then passed to the novelty detection uh, service, which Daily is going to talk about in a minute, which again, look at some, you know, some, some the tweets published in the past about Volkswagen and um, detects if the anomalous situation is actually novel. So it's talking about something that has never happened in the past. So people don't want, <coughs> sorry, people don't want to be alerted by stuff that has already happened you know, yesterday or a few hours before. They want to be alerted promptly about something, something new. And the answer and the, the final output of this, this pipeline is, uh, is, is, you know, is quite a summary of what's, what's going on, on on Twitter, which is a, a single tweet, which is the most representative of this anomalous situation. Right. So um, w which are the main challenges of this? Um, of this detection uh, of, of the, the volume, uh, the um, anomaly detection system. Well, we, as I said, we want to, to, to alert users promptly. And if you have a look at this, which is another, which is another chart, and which is um, year to day, so from the beginning of the year till a till couple of days ago, we see, well, we want, I mean, we want to identify these spikes, but we need to be careful, right? So in this period here, we can see that the conversation was, was not so high. We got a few spikes, but 
what we really want is to is to get those which are unexpected, right? So we don't want to to get, for instance, this sort of. We don't want to be to to alert people for this sort of spikes because something has already happened, right? But how do you how do you how do you know that, right? So how do you avoid those anomalies and how do you um, get them to get the good one in a fast way, quick way? So in order to answer this question, we need to we need to define our problem, right? So we need to to find a variable to measure. So we need to understand why. So what what's the the, the feature of the, the characteristic of the data that makes it anomalous. So it can be you know, on a tweet you got many information, the location, the time, anything. So what what makes um, the social activity anomalous? So that's that's one question that you need to ask yourself. And also, how do you establish if what you observe is unexpected? So you need to give sort of a measure for for that. And the approach that we we took, and is by the way applicable to to other to other situations, is uh, right. We we count the number of tweets given a fixed time window. So we said, okay, let's let's uh, let's let's consider I don't know ten minutes, an hour, whatever, and we count the tweets published during this period, and then to to establish the um, anomalous nature of of this period, we predict the what we expect to be the number of tweets for for that period, and then we use this prediction to to give a measure of the um, unexpectedness of 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 the um, of the measure, and and this is quite important. I mean, this this is applicable to any any sort of data which concerns events happening in time. So as long as we have an event which which is defined at some point in time, we can then use this approach, which it's it's straightforward, it's simple, and it's easy to to explain to people. Right? So let's let's then let's then try to model this this uh, this number of tweets that comes in 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 time. Right. So if we so the thing to do is to to model the tweets rate for this um, for for let's say the stream concerning Volkswagen. Um, so what we can do is to take a basic approach and say, all right, the we assume that the volume is quite static, which is you know which is not ideal because we we can see we got some seasonal behavior here, so every week people talk more, you know, publish more during during weekdays, and then the conversation goes quiet during the weekend, especially if we are talking about like finance finance related or internal news. And uh, so we don't want to use a static volume, right? If we take, if we, if we consider the average volume for this period, is clearly not indicative of, of what's going on in general. So you got like peaks like these, or this one, which have got the same volume, but they are clearly in two different contexts. So what we want is, is is a dynamic rate which changes over time, and it also sort of includes. It has got some sort of memory of what happened in the in the recent past. So what's what's the natural way to do that? Well, if we get if we have events happening in time, there is the uh, natural way to do them to model them is using a Poisson process. So, and this has this have got a has got a very simple explanation, and you know it's it's quite straightforward. So if we take the expected number of tweets. Or events, because that's general, occurring until a certain time. Then this is directly um, is proportional to the to the rate at which at which these events happening, and the time that has passed till the beginning. So the pr the um, parameter of this process is the rate, which in our case is the tweet rate, and we can then have a nice explanation of what what we expect, what's the expected value for this for this process. And what's very, very handy is also having a regression model that manages to, to model these these expected number of tweets or events as a linear combination of stuff that we know about this uh, about this period or, or about these tweets. So straightforward um, 
logarithm of this rate is a linear combination of predictors, uh, characteristic of the data, and some coefficients that we estimate um, running the, the regression model. So, so what's, what's the next question then? Well, let's, let's pick some predictors for, for, the, for the fit rate. And um, our approach, or what, what, what I show you here, is how to select them, how to be as simple, I mean, how to be as simple as possible and include all this seasonality effect and memory um, context that I told you about already. So one, some of them can be, you know, can involve the day of the week in which uh, that we are analyzing the hour of the day. Maybe if we are in, on a larger scale, you include even the month of the year, but any, anything that concerns seasonal, seasonal behavior can be included in this model, as well as recent behavior that can be, you know, tweets published in the previous time window, two time windows earlier, or tweets published until this point in time of the day, or the month, or yesterday, anything. You can include other, other variables, the model is flexible, you just add them as predictors and, and there is no... Um, you don't add much complexity to, to the model itself. But, so, the, okay. so this, this, is, um, this is the approach to predict the variable, to uh, predict the, the tweet rate. But what we wanted to do at the beginning was to detect the anomaly. So we don't want to, to create a model that, that perfectly fits the data and, and do all this sort of thing. But we need to detect the anomaly and measure give a measure of how expected was this count of, of tweets. And how we do that? Well, we can simply take a probabilistic approach which says, right, I have a prediction for the tweet rate. I calculate the probability that I see a number of tweets which is greater than the one. So what's, what's the probability of seeing more tweets than what I've seen so far? Well, if this has got a very low probability, and then you set this threshold, just, mm, choosing a threshold, let's call it alpha, then if the probability of this event happening is quite low, then you say, well, this is unlikely given my, my prediction, right? And then you can, you can establish with this probabilistic framework an answer which says, yes, it's, uh, the, the, the period is anomalous. So we're seeing an anomalous number number of tweets. And uh, the cool thing about this approach is that, and this is why I wanted to show it to you, is that it's super timely. So we, we can even predict the tweet rate in advance. So there is nothing that stops us um, from predicting it at the beginning of the, of the period. So we are just taking into account um, variables concerning the, the day of the, mo the, the month or the day of the week the time, so it's, uh, it's everything is known in advance. It's unsupervised, so you don't need, to, don't need annotations. So at the beginning, we didn't actually know what, what an anomaly was, because it's not clear, right? So it can be about anything. It can be about a scandal happening or other, other things, or you know, a um, um, CEO stepping down. You don't, you, don't, you, don't need to, you don't need to provide annotations for that. Uh, the other thing is that it, it adapts to different time scales. So if you are detecting events happening quite fast, like tweet publishing, published, or events which are uh, happens in, uh, in a larger time frame, then you can adapt this model. So it can be like stuff like a sensor which detects a light or something that passes through, or um, you know, um, request to the server, anything, any event that happens in time. It can, it can include more predictors. You're free to you know, add uh, more of them. It doesn't, doesn't hurt the, the complexity of the model. Um, and I told you about the Poisson distribution, but you can use different, different families, different um, uh, distribution families. So you can use, I don't know, for instance, here I said that one of the, one of the disadvantages of this approach, of this of using exactly the Poisson model is that some, sometimes the, the data are over dispersed, which means that the variance is, is not, I mean, it's, they got high variance. And 
the Poisson model doesn't doesn't allow to you to to model the variance with a different parameter, so uh, parameter, so which is the same as the bean. So you might want to use a negative binomial one, which gives you more flexibility. Another thing, another disadvantage is that when you have events which are rare, most of the time in these time windows you have no event, so zero, which kind of um, affects your your prediction. So what you might want to do is to use a zero inflated Poisson, which models the, um, basically the number of times that the event happens. So the event happens yes or no. And then after that, you put a Poisson on it, which models the number of events during this time window. And um, another thing is that this just looks at the volume of tweets and the, the time at which they are published. So there is no way to, to understand if the anomaly is genuine, so it's not driven by spam or it's somehow expected, which can be a news that, that, is, that people know is coming out, like product release or, or stuff like that. But, all, but this is a starting point. This is how we, st we, we start and we say, right, this volume here is anomalous. Then there are all sorts of other algorithms that comes after that and can help you detecting the, if the anomaly is genuine or not, and that's what is going to talk about now. Yep. Thanks. Okay, so Mattia explained how we obtain these anomalous periods. Um, now, what I'm going to tell you, talk to you about, is novelty detection. So. Uh, the output of, of the pipeline that he uh, just explained is a period in which we have a number of tweets which the algorithm considers to be anomalous. Now the question is, okay, we do not want to alert a person if this information has been previously seen. We do not want to alert a person for every single tweet in that time period. So. Um, we extended this pipeline and added a novelty detector system that does just that. It selects from this time period a tweet that is actually important, relevant, and it is also novel. So, given an anomaly period, identify which of the tweets is novel. And um, we do this by um, starting from an observation that these tweets tend to cluster in what we call stories. And for example, the Volkswagen story uh, with the emission scandal is, is one, such, one such example. Um, so we redefine the problem and say, given an anomaly period, find me those tweets which are not part of a previously seen story. So for example, here in, uh, uh, for Volkswagen, you see that there it starts already with um, the EPA's issues notice at uh, 3.53, so the second tweet from below. But, and then afterwards, there will be a period in which there will be multiple tweets reiterating the same story. What are the challenges? So first of all, we are working in a streaming setting. This means that each tweet needs to be processed in a bound space and time. Now, the bound space means that we have constant amount of stories in memory, and the bound time means that we need an algorithm that um, can actually provide an output in a timely manner. Um, we've chose locality sensitivity hashing for that. Um, another thing to consider is how much history is it required in order to decide if a tweet is novel or not. So how much time in the, in the past that we need to go in order to make uh, a good decision. And uh, one more thing is that stories can be reoccurring. So you can have, um, let's say, the EPA scandal for Volkswagen can start in September, then uh, for a certain amount of time the situation is quiet, and then let's say in December or January it spikes again because there's additional information, some people get uh, Th there's some repercussions of the scandal. I hope.
hope so. <laughs> you cannot hear me? Okay. Like so? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Are you for that? Yeah. So, um, just a second. Um, the paper that we were looking at is Okay, <laughs> so the paper that, um, that was really interesting for us um, was streaming first story detection with application to Twitter. So uh, Sasha Petrovich had a very interesting approach to solving this problem. And um, the idea of the paper that we also took was, okay, we have locality sensitivity hashing. It's a very nice algorithm and is going to give us information about what we have seen in the past and is novel, but additionally to that, we have to pay attention because of locality sensitivity hashing is not particularly good at showing us the tweets that are different from what we've seen before. So, um, in locality sensitivity hashing, you have you find an ap approximate nearest neighbor. It, it is defined as an approximate nearest neighbor task. You hash each tweet into a bucket to maximize the probability of collision for the tweets which are close. And you also have a measure um, of distance for, for your tweets. Now, the thing is that it works very well if you are going to have a tweet that um, has been seen before and is in your in your local locality sensitivity hashing index history. However, if that tweet is um, quite distant from the tweets that you have seen before, it's not gonna be able to um, tell you that that tweet is already seen. So what we did was, additionally to the locality se sensitivity hashing index, we also added another index where we keep the most recent tweets, and then whenever we identify a tweet that is novel according to our historical index, we ask our uh, most recent tweet index, is that tweet, act is that tweet actually novel? So the novelty flow looks as follows. We have an incoming tweet, we ask ourselves is this tweet in the locality sensitivity hashing index? If it is, then the tweet is not novel. And if not, we are going to look it up in the inverted index. If the inverted index tells us that it is actually a novel tweet, then we are going to alert the system. And if not, we have a confirmation that the tweet is not novel. So, to sum up, we have um, two main parts of the system. One part generates our anomaly period. And for that, we've used a, gen a generic anomaly detection system, which can be applied to different problems. It is easily understandable, fast to train, and uh, it also provides uh, prediction in, an, in a fast manner. And it works well in a streaming pipeline. For the second part, the novelty detection part, we use a two-step approach. We obtain fast lookup using locality sensitivity hashing, and we also perform an additional lookup in order to confirm that our tweet is actually novel. <coughs> okay, so thank you, and if you have any questions. Yeah, so the question was um, the regression that I used, if the, if the variables, so some of the predicts are predictors are correlated or not. So the thing is that I used categorical variables. So it, it means that the hour of the day, so for some, you divide the data into buckets again, basically. 
so you have you consider one so you consider the uh, coefficient for one variable only at the time so for instance if you have hours then you only consider if it's six o'clock if that tweet comes at in the period between six and seven o'clock then you only consider that coefficient there so it's not it's not really a problem I by the way yeah it was not log logistic regression but was on regression but anyway. so could a release um, an open source anomaly detection algorithm do that to smooth so I want to know if we should pivot it and if so yeah. what things you like about it right so uh, that one I call it like a breakpoint detection algorithm because what it, it was um, what it did was to calculate the medians between periods and check if the medians was like you know stepping up or, or down there from what so first was yeah. breakpoint and afterwards there was an R package yeah the R package yeah Yeah, and that was more like we couldn't use it. So with this one, you can set uh, the time window and can be super quick at detecting. It's very sensible. This one with the the package of Twitter uh, of tweet that Twitter released, I wasn't able to to get as much sort of to get the, the anomalies as quick as with this one. So it was more on a lot. You can use it on larger time spans, which works quite well. And the other thing was that with, with these, you have a better understanding of what's the probability of this event happening, because you've got a probability framework behind it. And you can, and the other, the other quick thing about this is that there is a, um, a clear link between the Bayesian approach and the frequentistic one. Frequentist one. This is this one, because the, the regression in the two cases are the same and gives the same result. So you can actually estimate the probability of this anomaly happening or not, which we you couldn't do with the Twitter one. Yeah? Hello. Um, I've been working on Twitter analysis and on the news analysis, and there would seem to be two components that are a little bit missing from the system. One is a sense of reputation, which is usually done by analyzing the social graph. Second one would be a sense of uh, keyword weighting, which is usually done on the basis of some domain knowledge that not all keywords are equally significant from a financial outcome yeah, point of view. Definitely. So what what um, so what I try to to tell you when I show that pipeline is that. All these things are done by other algorithms. So our company has got some user analysis. That was the social network analysis that we that we do, and we also give scores to each tweet, which uh, which is a relevant score, which says right this is financially relevant and this based on keyword and and other and other things. So these two pieces were just looking at the volume. So my part didn't actually look at the text, but the input of it was only were like were only sets of tweets which are relevant, and in this case, in our case, the, the normality algorithm actually just need to know which tweet is normal and not and not about its content. But yeah, there are definitely do two problems which we solve, and they are you know they are present in Twitter data. Again. And when you push your data to yeah. customer, um, how can you distribute it? How well is the distribution? And also, how well is the So at the beginning, I was like trying to, 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 to run different models, try the, the negative binomial one, other families in order to get the best fit out of it. But actually, it's not what we really want. What we want is to detect anomalies. So it's not like to, to get the best fitting yeah, algorithm. As I said, like I, I don't measure the prediction. I measure the outcome of the detection. It says, so if if my algorithm detects well, detects well anomalies, then th it does the job, right? So it's it's about getting the anomalies, not getting the prediction right. 
Yeah, but you, yeah, but we need to detect the spikes, right? We don't, for instance, need to detect when the conversation goes down. It's only been supervised. You're defining what is manual in yourself. I've not, I, yeah, but it's not supervised. At the, uh, okay. this one. <coughs> so you cannot. You first need. I mean, if you know already what's anomalous, then run classification and stuff like that. But we didn't know what was anomalous or not. But you then would start to analyze the, the yes. But it, it is something that happens with time, you know? Yeah. You need to wait and annotate things. Yeah. Yep. Just try to benchmark uh, the anomaly detection using the last representation of things rather than the position. Yeah. So, so this would be, OK, just look at the previous acceleration. Forget about any regression and do these things. So yes, but it, it doesn't perforce, perform as well as, as this one. So I, I've tried already using just a Poisson model uh, the, the Poisson distribution to get the probability of being anomalous. If it, that's what you, you're saying, right? You take the previous count, you, you set it as parameter, and check the p-value yeah. for the current count. Yeah. And this, by the way, this doesn't um, doesn't include any any concept about time, which is seasonality is the main aspect of of this thing. Because if something happens at four in the morning on a Sunday night, then that's that's people wants to know about it. That's pretty anomalous. We have also some kind of way you can control the profile here, for example. The what? The, for the profile, like the profile. Like oh, the user profile. profile. Yes. Someone yeah. with a lot of followers, or also yes, you can add like yeah. bots. As I said, stuff with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Some kind of yeah. So we have we have a user ranking system with just this thing, and actually it gives a it says, all right, these users are important, let's say, for these sort of assets rather than for others. And how, how do you track them? How do, you, how do I track? Do you track, track them? What do you mean track? How do you know which profile are linked to which account? There are people that they talk about spanners. They are like linked to the spanner story. But that, that's a, that's a so well, we analyze the social graph, and we run. Users which are either bots or the information that they they disseminate is spammy. Okay. At this level, it's not about relating the user to a kind of topic. Uh, how, how can you know? How can you? Uh, only only tracking a bot is not like a trap. No. We know. <laughs> but this is not part. So what we what we showed here is not an in the entire system. Okay. In order to be able to alert users, mm -hmm. so financial professionals, definitely there are parts of the system that need to take into account how credible is the user, how credible is the piece of information. Here, we were only talking about how to detect when a tweet, what kind of tweets are anomalous. Okay. And then, given that these tweets are anomalous, which of these anomalous tweets did we see before or not? Okay. So this is, all, this is a very small subset of the yeah. system. But you are right. Definitely. Definitely. The source of the information is a definite input that you need to take into account. Otherwise, you are going to show, otherwise, this system is going to show a lot of spammy information because if you have a user or a bunch of users that tweets the same, the exact same tweet a million times, this, this system is going to detect it, even if you're going to be alerted only once. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yes. So, uh, how do you protect your users against pump and dump schemes like the ones that have been using micro cap markets for years, where we spread a rumor, mer let the let the rumor mill run with it, and 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 make make money off the back of uh, day traders? Who are hoping for the best? Well, it's a tricky question. Well, we don't. <laughs> okay, we 
don't play that one, so it's just like, <laughs> no, but your users have a very real issue yeah. that Twitter yeah. is being used to gain yeah. market. Yeah. But that's, that's why all these relevant algorithms or stuff related to the user comes into the game. We, we provide scores, we provide like, what we think about the user, we say, okay, this is, this is highly trackable, it's a source, it's, it's, it has got some credibility. It's you know, also I just want to be <coughs> clear that what, what you're saying goes some way, but doesn't actually solve the problem, right? Yeah. The way the schemes work is that they they're basically spear phishing <coughs> schemes that oh, I, convince I, I, yeah. reputable users no. uh, in the Twitter community to retweet a, 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 a bad, as it were, bad information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got, I got your point. So I'll give you my answer, yeah. which is that's, that's on a <coughs> behavioral uh, in mind. Like, people, if, if, if a journalist retweets, false information that I tweeted, you can't do anything about it, right? It's, it, was, it was him who decided to, to retweet it. I, yeah, I don't know if you want to give any other answer. I think it's... Yeah. From my point of view, I think the answer is we give a score to the users, and this score is adaptive. So if we find out later on that this user uh, disseminated the wrong information, then we can adapt and we can change the, the information that we assign, so this score. Now, if this happens, let's say that I, there is a user, it pushes out certain erroneous information, the system is gonna detect it, first time that it saw it. However, we can rectify it. You can think of it like an online learning system using active learning. Okay, that's thanks, Nelly and Mattia again.